Hello. So we built our standalone wireless quiz buzzer system, and it's great. But what about having your quiz hosted by the computer? Or even better, a retro computer? In this video, I'll show you how to modify the wireless quiz buzzer system to connect it up to an Amiga, and then build a multiplayer quiz game using Amos. There's several ways we could connect this. For example, we could wire it up as a joystick, and have the four buttons correspond to the four directions on the joystick, but then controlling the buttons in terms of how they flash would be a pain. We could use the Amiga's parallel port, but that's probably overkill for what we need. So we're going to use the Amiga's serial port for this. I want the Arduino to provide a separate serial port for the Amiga to connect on. You can't just wire up the Arduino pins to the serial port on the Amiga, because RS-232 works a different way at different voltage levels. The Arduino uses 0 and 5 volts for low and high, whereas the RS-232 uses negative and positive voltages. Luckily, we don't need to worry about this, as there's a simple chip that can do this conversion. And it's available pre-soldered onto a board with a DB9 connector on it, and we'll connect it up to the Arduino like this. We'll also need to update the design of the box slightly to accommodate this new connector. Assembly of this is fairly straightforward, so no fast assembly videos this time. However, the only cable I could find was this null modem serial cable, so this has to be modified firstly to swap pin 2 and 3 around, as we don't want it to be a null modem cable. Secondly, we need a gender changer on the DB9 port end, so we need to update the code for the quiz controller to support this. We could connect it to the same serial port as our normal output, but I want to keep that for PC communication whereas we want this port to run at a much slower speed. The first change is to define another software serial port on the new two pins. Now only one software serial device is allowed to listen for incoming data at a time, so after setting it up, we need to call listen to choose this as the active device. We only need to listen to the serial device for DF Player Mini when we're communicating with it. Our communications protocol is going to be very straightforward. Any data received by the Arduino is looked at one byte at a time. A byte consists of eight bits. We'll look at each group of two bits at a time on the controller. Two zeros means turn the light off. Zero one means turn the light on. And one zero means flash the light and enable the button. This is processed by the handle serial function, and when byte data is available, the data is extracted to match this pattern. We perform this action for both the new serial port and the one provided by the Arduino interface. The only other change is when the button is pressed. This time, when playing the sound effect, we need to temporarily switch the serial device listening whilst playing, and then switch it back afterwards. We also need to send the button number over the serial port, with the highest bit set just to validate this is actually a button press. See? Not that complex. And here's the new reprinted box, with the new port on the back. Looks neat, doesn't it? Now on to the Amos side of things. First thing we need to do is make sure there's enough variable space for all the questions, and then we define the total number, and then define some arrays to hold the questions. Next, we load our questions in, and we start by opening the questions file and then setting up a progress bar. Then we work our way through the questions, loading them one by one. Each question has two lines, three answers, and a line that is the actual answer number. Next, we'll need to set up communication via the serial port. Amos has a set of commands for this, but you'll need to make sure the serial.device file is in your devs folder for this to work properly. We're communicating on the Amiga's original serial port at 9600 board, 8 bits, 1 stop bit and no parity. Now that's all prepared, we need to set up the screen. We create a screen of 8 colours, turning off the flashing, cursor, mouse cursor and clear it. Then we set up the colour palette like this. Now we want the serial port to be constantly monitored. We could keep manually calling a function to check this, but Amos includes a way to have this happen automatically at a timed interval. Interval, kind of like an interrupt. So we'll set this up to allow it to happen approximately three times a second. This calls the handle serial function, which will attempt to read a byte from the port and validate it and send a message back before re-enabling the interrupt. Now, finally set up, we can run the quiz question. The first thing we do is call output question, which will pick a random question that hasn't been asked yet. Then it redraws the scores to the screen. Then it types out the questions and answers and returns the correct answer number. The typing effect is generated by writing one character at a time with a delay and a sound effect, one by one until the line has been output. Now that the question has been displayed, we need to reset who's answered and then build up the command for enabling flashing of the buttons for people who haven't attempted an answer yet. The command is an 8-bit byte where two bits represent the state of the buttons. We use roll or rotate left to move our command into place. Next, we sit and wait until one of the buttons is pressed or someone taps the escape key. If one of the buttons was pressed, we play an appropriate sound and make a note that that player has attempted an answer. We then update the command that we're sending to just illuminate the button that was pressed. Next, we set the background colour to the button colour and switch the rest of the colours round and then wait for the player to choose the appropriate answer. If they didn't press the escape key and got the correct answer, we'll play a correct tone, increase their score and mark the question as over. If however they got the answer wrong, we play a different tone. If all the players have had an incorrect guess, we signal that the question is over. If not, the loop repeats, allowing the remaining players to have a go. Simple, eh? Let's see that in action. 
I'm going to capture the Amiga's output using the RGB to HDMI output from my Amiga 500 Plus, so you can see what's going on. We'll start by running the program. And after a short pause while it loads the questions in, there are a hundred, the first question starts to be displayed. And the buttons begin to flash as we'd expect. I'll pretend to be the green player, and I'll guess answer number three, which is wrong. And this time, I'll get the answer correct. We then continue on to the next question. You'll note in between questions, the buttons stop flashing, and they start flashing immediately the moment the question has been displayed. It's great that Amos now has full control over what these buttons are doing, allowing you to create different combinations of who's allowed to answer. I think, however, some of the sound effects could do with replacing. That was easy! The use of the every command in Amos sure made the communications easy. You could easily expand this to make a completely different game. How about the popular TV series Catchphrase? I built a PC version of that myself and it works great. I'd love to share it with you, but there's copyright involved. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.